Tech carries this one to the 20 yard line of Louisiana Tech as Wallace made the tackle. The injured player was Chris Marshall for Louisiana Tech. We'll pass along whatever we know there as soon as we know it as Hatfield looks on and total yards. First half, 104, already 61 on this drive for the Owls. And the quarterback hands off to Beck, and he's down to the almost 15-yard line before Bobby Gray makes the tackle, and they seem to have caught the Bulldogs a little bit off balance here. Well, they're under the no-huddle offense, Bill. That is by design. They do have done that pretty much throughout the year. Give them a little change of pace in the football game. It gives them a chance when they're behind to possibly get a few more plays run and see the pitch here by her. Headfield to the five. He scores! Just like that, Rice showing they can run the no huddle, they can run the hurry up, and they don't have to throw it to do it. And the Owls get a quick touchdown to start the second half. It's 31 to 9 on a 15 yard run by Clint Hatfield, his third touchdown of the season. Well, Ken Hatfield challenges offense. They respond, or they come out, they throw the football. Ocaranco makes the play, ma makes the reception on the play. Then you have the offense running a couple of good option plays and moving the ball efficiently. And then the big score on the pitch play. And the point after attempt by Skeen is up and good. 31-10. Coach Hatfield said score on the first drive will win the game. Well, they took care of the first part. Hatfield with a TD. It's a boost to start things off in the second half. It only took two minutes, seven seconds to go the length of the field goal. It's down the line and, Kyle, and Herm here does a nice job. He commits. Gets John Leonard to commit inside and he pitches it out nicely to Hatfield. He's a speed back out of the, the tailback spot coming around. Good pitch, good execution. Riceville took two minutes and seven seconds, as you said, to, to run it down the field and get the score. And that's what Ken Hatfield needs his bunch to do is to respond. Franklin and Curry are deep. Franklin will take it from the 13. Franklin found a little gap. And a nice run out to the 27-28 yard line before Huffman makes the hit. And for Ron Brown, as with well, Huffman. And let's take a look at the first half possessions for Louisiana Tech. I think most people take that success rate, won't they, Gary? Oh, certainly. What's what they've done on the on the on the game today? And other than that first one, they had a couple of drop passes on that first drive. And other than that, they move the ball down the field every time. And then the interception to, to set up the field. The field goal for Rice in the second quarter. And they ran the clock out. They've really been able to do anything they wanted to, moving the football, though, Bill, and, and good execution by the Bulldogs. Now, player down on the field, so we'll have another pause here as the Bulldogs, again, a moment ago, Marshall was slow to get up. And I think this is Willie Shepard. Let's go down to Kevin Eschenfeld. Yeah, first of all, Bill, Chris Marshall, he is fine. I looked over the trainer. He gave me the thumbs up. You know, we talked about Rice and the fact that they wanted to make a statement with this first drive. It was imperative that they put it in and get six, and they did. Now, conversely, Jack Bignell, he got in the face of his offensive lineman and his offense and his backs and said, basically, guys, now let's, it's your turn. Don't let them get back in this football game. And he basically challenged his offense. We'll see if they will meet the challenge back upstairs. Now, Rice coming in averaging 23 points a game, fifth in the league, but Louisiana Tech at 35, leading the whack. We'll take a brief break as they attend to the injured player, Shepard. It is Louisiana Tech with a 31-10 lead. Squared off here as Tech sees if they can answer the Rice touchdown to open the second half. It's first and 10 at the 28 for the Bulldogs. Smith on the ground, and he takes it to the 30-yard line, picks up two before Joe Bob Thompson makes the stop. Well, the defense for the Owls has to respond here as well, Bill. The offense went out there and did their job. Coach Hatfield wants his defensive bunch to, to slow down this Louisiana Tech offense who's been able to do just about anything they've wanted to today. Well, Rice had a big passing play in its opening drive. Let's see if Tech continues to stay on the ground or looks like here with five wideouts, they'll throw it on a second and eight. Rice bringing on the blitz, and it is incomplete. No time that time for McCowan, and... We were talking during the break that Rice defensively has to do something to shake up his tempo. Well, sometimes you're going to have to bring five, six guys, get in the face of McCown and just take the, take the rhythm away from him here. You're going to see Gatlin number 40 up here. He's going to come on the pressure here, and McCown's going to read it and try to get the receiver in the center. He sees the open receiver. The linebacker is going to try to get underneath, but the ball is just overthrown. 
would have had to thread that one very well to get it a completion. Good job that time of pressuring the quarterback. Third and eight from the 30. Big play for Rice's defense here. McCown has time. Incomplete, nearly picked off by Thompson. They say no, it hit the ground first. But mission accomplished as they have forced him to punt. Exactly. Three plays and out. The Rice Owls come up and they shut the offense down. And McCown throws the ball down to the ground so that his receiver can go down to get it and just leads him a little bit too far and Joe Bob is actually behind the contended receiver. Good camera work fellas. 53 seconds is the length of the La Tech possession and now Rice will get the football back and let's see what Dustin Upton comes up with punt wise South Carolina Longview Texas sky high nice little breeze behind it Taken to the 25 and bobbled with the 15. Hatfield cannot get away from it. Excellent coverage. Great speed for Louisiana Tech. And Rice will have it first to 10 on the 20. Brown made the tackle. Kevin Brown for Louisiana Tech. And a 48-yard punt gives the La Tech group a little breathing room as far as their defense. Well, it's a new show that everyone's been talking about. The best damn sports show, period. The new nightly show features a comedian who's a diehard sports fan, a bunch of ex-jocks who really know the game. And critics are calling it a collision of sports and comedy, introducing the best damn sports show, period, weeknights at 7.30 p.m., 11.30 p.m., only on Fox Sports Net. First and 10 from the 20. Hatfield on the receiving end this time from Herm. And he is knocked out of bounds, but was stop before then so the clock will continue to move they're going to mark it at the 27 i guess it is where davis made the tackle well hatfield's been a busy young man for the rice bunch kick returns punt returns and catching the ball out as a, as a wide receiver on that play bill and hatfield came in with just four receptions he scored the touchdown for rice the last possession Herm trying to cut it upfield looking for a hole Good coverage by the Bulldog defense on a second and three, though. And leading the way, John Nash and also Jerome Wallace. Well, actually going to lose a yard here. Watch the pressure by the defense. Go ahead and make the quarterback come up and commit. And watch him go backwards. The defense doing a good job of solidifying the corner, and they can't allow the pitch. And on the third and four, smothering defense on Robbie Beck, the fullback. And Leonard, Leonard rather, Gray, and Johnson, the threesome in the secondary to make the stop. Ken Hatfield says fourth and four, got to kick it away. Well, remember in the first period, or excuse me, the second quarter, they went on the fourth down here in the same area. It's a quick little hitter inside. They're on the no huddle, hurry up offense, so that's why we missed the play, but good job by the Bulldog defense. Yeah, Beck even bounced it back to the outside. They were still there to recover it. And then good field position after the punt by Travis Hale as Simon Fair catches it. And Louisiana Tech, after a 39-yard punt, will have possession on its own 37-yard line. Well, we talked about it earlier in the game, Bill, the Bulldog defense. Got a lot of speed out there, and they run to the ball real well. And if they play good assignment-oriented football, which they did in the first half against this Rice Al Bunch, hey, that athleticism that they have goes a long way to make a lot of plays and shut down the offense. This team opened with a victory over SMU, 36-6. That was down I-20 in Shreveport. They had two defensive touchdowns in that game to get their wax season off to a successful start. The completion, no, incomplete. Intended for Simon, hit hard by Bear, and it'll be second and 10. But Louisiana Tech then followed that up by losing at Oklahoma State, losing at Fresno, 38-28. Then beating San Jose State 41-20, Nevada 45-42, and then falling 48-41 in the overtime to Auburn. So 41, 45, and 41 points. And today, 31. The offense has certainly gotten it in gear for Jack Pick now. Second and 10 at the 37. 10.05 to go in the third. Handoff, Smith. Found a hole, carried two, lost the football, Thompson trying to recover, anybody's ball, and loose. Rice says they've got it. Officials have yet to signal. Owls football. Joe Bob Thompson, I believe, 
Might have been Justin Engler, 44. Yeah, Joe Bob Thompson, 43, right were right there, Bill. Just going to run a safe play up inside. Joe Smith, the tailback, comes through there. It's just a draw play. Going to hand off and see if we get the contact to pull the ball out. You see Bear there, 13, comes up and pops him, and that's number 30, Dawson. Dan Dawson, pulling the ball out. And you see Engler and Do uh, Joe Bob Thompson on the ground. The linebacker's finding it. Watch number 30 come into the screen here on the backside and pull it out. Good job of stripping the ball out by the defensive back. Dan Dawson's been a big playmaker his entire career at Rice. Makes another one happen here. First and 10 for Herm. No time. He is smothered. Herm wanted a little play action. That lock tech defense led by Nash was there once again. Well, Nash is in on a linebacker free blitz inside. Good job of coming up inside. Normally, he's going to take the dive back inside, but Herm does a little hesitation block there. And watch number 47 come straight through here. He's just going to blitz inside and get in behind the pulling guard and make the play on the quarterback. Second down, and Herm steps up in the pocket, makes a beautiful pass complete for the first down to Gilbert Okoronkwo. And he is slow to get up, but a nice reception of 17 yards and a first down, Ol Alford was covering. Well, he's hurting, his, looks like his wrist or arm is hurting. Kyle Herm steps up and delivers a strike, and Okoronkwo goes up tall for it, and watch as he turns. He tries to slap the ball down to get more yardage, and might have hypered his elbow on the play. Injury starting to mount for both ball clubs here. First and 10 at the 39-yard line. Herm looks for the play from the sideline with a no huddle. Hawkins. Hawkins to the 30, the 25, and takes a couple with him. Vince Hawkins, who came in averaging just 2.8 a carry, gets 16 on that tote, and Rice once again moves the chains. So the Owls had a three and out after their opening possession where they went, what, 82 yards, I believe it was, for the touchdown, and then they get it back on the turnover, and now, as you look at Okoronkwo being looked at, it's first and 10 at the 22. Nichols made the tackle the last time. Herm to throw it. Hawkins couldn't hang on. Gray was there. Leonard also covering in the secondary. Well, this is something new for the Rice offense. We've seen them build last year two or three times on, on the air and didn't really have a good passing game. But now it looks like they were able to spread things out. They've got depth at wide receiver. They've got some good athletes at the tailback and halfback position, so they're able to move them out and throw the ball pretty effectively. Two teams desperate for a win going out of there. UTEP with the lead over SMU. Herm to throw it in the end zone, and it is nearly complete, but unable to hang on is Booth. Booth covered by Willie Shepard. Well, on the second down and 10, they're going to roll out here with Kyle Herm. He's reading the defense well, but watch Booth. 81 gets behind the defense and makes an adjustment on the ball. The ball is there. He's got it, looks it in, not able to get his hands around the football. And Shepard does a pretty good job of covering and pulling his arms down so he doesn't continue to catch. Yeah, Booth unable to extend the hands. It got in with the pads, and that makes it third and 10 for the 22. Herm in trouble. Fires and complete. And it will be a first down. You have the side judge back on the goal line, sees the call, and you got the call on a first down here for the Owls. Good job that time by Herm getting outside, getting around the rush of the defense, and then he throws a strike on the sideline. Well, that's not an easy play. You're talking 5'8", Kyle Herm on the roll. The big guy's breathing down his neck and fires it. That's a big-time pass. He got one foot in. He was back here. The foot was in. His right foot was in on the uh, inside the white stripe. We'll probably see it here at the end of the play. It's a good grab. As you see the foot right there, I think it's a good call. The official comes in from the backside and makes the call, and it's a correct call. And then a penalty, dead ball foul tacked on after the completion. So that's going to make it first and goal to go from the six-yard line or the five-yard line officially, Gary. And Rice, a chance to slowly work its way, I say slowly, quickly work its way back in. It's 31-10, 8.31 to go in the third. They can't afford a mistake, though. Herm, the pitch. Hatfield, I believe, dives out of bounds. 
And Shepard making the tackle on Hawkins. And Hawkins comes around. He's the tail. He's the pitch back on this play. And 